G'day mate, welcome back, um, I thought I'd show how this thing goes back together, if you've watched the other episodes, quite easy to pull apart, now I've just spent quite a lot of time cleaning, make sure it's clean, there's no um, debris, dirt, any, anywhere, you need compressed air, um, degreaser, petrol, whatever, blood clean. Clean the bearings with um, degrees of fresh air, uh, compressed air as well. But um, so it's clean. They still spin only night, just they're a bit tight. But I'll put some um, two shrug all in a minute, in a bit. But um, I'll put this together. So what you do the first work out is is everything here. So I've got the screws. I've got my tools. Um, is all the parts on the saw. These saws have dowels. I'm not sure if they come out or not because I've never actually pulled these ones off. Other saws, these um, dowels fall out quite easily. Um, one part I'm going to fix up here is the pulse line. Um, I might cut that right now. So, let me cut the gasket. Make sure there's no um, issues with getting air because it looks like it's been trying to blow itself out. Made me think. Gotta make sure you don't damage the gasket. So it's so soft, I just, just touched it and it fell apart. Well, I think some mad sitting in the shed talking to myself. That's all right. Probably am mad. Well, that out. Screwdriver and pull that piece of gas through there. Otherwise, that will cause problems. Almost out, almost. I was just thinking, guys, people put these things through rubbish and say, oh, they're crap, they're crap. Well, they are in a way, but I was thinking about that. The amount of crap these things have to deal with, I'm surprised they keep running. Um, the air fills are so rubbish, they suck so much dirt through the carby. Makes you wonder how much dirt do these things eat in their lifetime. It must be a whole heap, and they still run. They're, they weren't powerful, but that's where they are. All right. That'll do. Right, that'll do, Peg, that'll do. Right. Now, this part here. Where are we? Uh, we're here. So that gasket will then, will then sit on this piece here. So that will seal it. So that's fine. All right. Well done now, make sure the rest of it's all right, yeah, it's all good, good, fine, righto. I put a bit of, um, uh, what do you call this stuff, Pre um, oh, it's a, a sealant, um, paint, uh, oh, I'll get a new one, what's the new one called? Permi, Permi Max, see that's what I use if you want to do um, a gasket delete. It took me ages to work out what it was, and this stuff's damn good stuff. Um, once it goes off, um, I'll show you another trick how to use it, or I think better um, when I do the um, head gasket. Um, but once it goes off, 
you pull the screws out of the head if you want to change the piston or the yeah piston. Um, to get this off, you need a rubber mallet and give it a good tap because it won't let let go. It's, it's super tough stuff. Right, enough of that. Now, do I have enough in this little tube? Maybe I do. Don't need much. For the last bung out, there we go. Right. So, I'm going to make a little... I'm going to put a little bit on the saw. Any thin, you don't need much. I should have brake cleaned it, but um, this stuff doesn't care too much about oil and stuff like that. Just, it's pretty good. It's been oil degrees, blown, degrees, blown. So this is just the stuff that like in the gasket will probably do its job anyway. This is sort of similar for all big saws, all professional saws, I should say. I would recommend brake cleaner as a, a cleaning um, fluid. But this saw is just to play around, muck around, but it should perform bloody good. Let's hope. I borrowed an idea from Iron Horse. He made me think. Which is good when you get an idea from someone else, you think, that's damn good. Thanks to Iron Horse. I've watched his shows. You want more knowledge? Watch him. Um, the Chainsaw Guy. I don't know, parody on him a few years ago. But um, he's a nice guy. He's getting on too. That's like we all are. I like the um, twin layer. It, so a little bit everywhere. And they go tacky. Which doesn't take long. Like just a couple of minutes. Squeeze it all together. Because I hate leaks. Leaks on a two stroke motor will kill it. Real, real quick. But I hate oil leaks too. Pay attention to the top part. You don't want to block your pulse lines, so don't do put too much there. Make sure there's no gaskets bent over where they seal. Because this, see how big that gasket is? So be careful what's hanging around, what's floating around, dirt, hair, sawdust. Make sure you clean, guys, very well. Right. Almost done. Thin, thin, low, low, just like that. It's not hard. Right. Now, you got to make sure you put your crankshaft in the right way and I'll show you what I did which was a mistake but it shouldn't matter too much. So when you look at your crank, whoops, when you look at your crank, determine what side your crank is what. This side here with that taper, flywheel. So these saws are easy but the other saws you chuck these, the cranks in the freezer Get them really cold and you gotta heat these up, they're pains, but you can do that. But these are easy saws, so put your conrod, conrod up, hang on to it, it should slide straight in. So that goes in like that. Grab the other part, make sure nothing's in the road, make sure everything's free. Slide back over like that, line it up. Simple as that. Right. Put some bolts in it. that there, nip it up, where's the 
that one goes down there. Third one. Now, only slightly tightening these at the moment. I'm going to get them all in and tighten them all up at the same time. I like to hand tighten things up. Or unless I want to make sure the threads are working first, then I'll come tighten them. But but I always do the final torque with my hands, so you can feel it. Because machines will rip the crap out of things. As you saw before, these bolts here were loose. That's from factory. But these things do a hell of a lot of vibrations and stuff. Something's not tightening up right. Oh, that's right. That cap doesn't close. Right, this on. Um, where's the other two bolts go? Right. So I've got all five bolts in there. I hope this helps someone out if they want to muck around. These saws are a brilliant start if you want to get into porting. Quite often you find them on the side of the road. People have forgotten how to fix things, which I think is appalling. In this throwaway world, I hate throwaway old vintage chainsaws. It just, to me, it's, oh, it's terrible. Like, they were expensive in the day. If you know how to work on them, they can, you can get them running pretty quick. Carby gets cheap. The major parts you can't get Right. So now I'll tighten these ones up. Just make sure it's a bit of a nip. Bit of a nip. Get back to these two. Make sure it rotates. That needs to be a two bit more. I'll fix it in a sec. Tighten them up properly now. This is the main bolt to hold the whole thing together, so they've got to be reasonably tight. I'm not, not saying over tight, but reasonably, because the gasket will move and things will change, but that one's tight. But be prepared to strip them. These are cheap saw guys, cheap saws guys, so they do strip. This one's not tightening up, it's not stripping. No. Right, those three are done. That's the oil tank. Ugh. Just make sure yeah, we're still going. Now, if you ever wonder why my videos are so oily and smoky when they start up, this is why. I put a clock, I don't care. I want these things to be protected with the first couple of seconds when it starts spinning over. I'll put 
a bit more than actually. Band's a bit dry. Now that'll burn off quite quick. But it guarantees, there we go, guarantees it won't get a dry um, um, bearing. There you go, it's been nice now. Now, what I was talking about before is what I saw, show, I saw Iron Horse do. If you look at the um, countermount weights, as they spin around like that, they'll throw air and fuel mixture to the transfer chambers. So I know I've taken a bit of weight off. I know it will cause problems to the saw, but I will, I'm going to um, take some weight off the piston. But this is not for um, day every day use. This is just for fun. Now, the mistake I made before, I'd done the wrong side of the crank, not thinking which way the rotation was. So, yeah, it'll vibrate a fair bit. I don't believe in using, losing too much weight. The reason being, if you look at old cars, um, in Australia we've got a car called a Holden, and my mate had an XU1, a XU1 um, Holden Trana LJ, so about 972. He lightened the flywheel to the point that it was so light he had trouble getting to idle. Now you need weight to make things idle. So once you get up to revs on chainsaw, the more weight you've got, you can't go too much. So the more weight you've got in the flywheel, that actually keeps the motor going and running um, with the weight. Because once you get something spinning, it's hard to stop it. Um, fly, I can't it's fly or something. But um, that's if you if you cut these fins off, um, it will spin and rev a hell of a lot quicker. But as soon as you load it up in the timber, it won't keep going that well. It's 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 sort of like it's a funny dance. So you be very careful. Anyway. That's that part there done. Now, I'll show you one last thing before I sign off. I fold a little piece off the um, little piece off the keyway. Don't know if it'll fit. Get my fingers to work. Right now. The part I fold off is on this side of the keyway. Now, one that enables you can do, I'll slide that on. So, that's factory there. You can move it just a little bit. It's hard to show, guys. Probably get an extra two or three degrees. At the moment, that's all I'm worried about, just a little bit. Um, but that will help that up. Um, I think it's enough for it. Yeah, it'll do. <laughs> um, where's my cheddar gun? There it is there. That's on. Now, they're clean. Oh, the one last other thing I was going to show. Now, people probably go, oh my God, this is what I do, guys. Um, these saws suck, as I said before, suck so much dirt and shit for the Vicarbi. I said the S word. Um, I said shit, if you get to watch them. Um, we get a bit of kitchen paper towel, I think. Right. Reason I do this is to try and stop the debris getting tired. Probably won't. Probably won't stop it at all. Now, I use this to clean the old gaskets off, and I'll show you what I'll do it. Yeah, don't worry. I don't normally do it anyway. Some soils are very hard to get the gaskets off. Now it looks a bit rough, but 
The reason I do this is if you paint a um, surface, you, you um, sand the surface and it's, they call it keying. So when I want to use this glue, a uh, Permitech glue, if you put, I've, I've done it, I've, I've seen what it does. If you put it on a clean, flat surface, it doesn't stick. But if you put a, a little bit of a grind to it like this, it actually gets into the little grinds and actually bites and it, it was so tough to get apart. Um, Brake kind of cleans it back up again, so it's not a big deal, but it's what I do to actually get the gaskets off. Like, you can't, you can't use your fingernails to get it off. I don't like scraping it too hard with screwdrivers because if you're not careful, you'll scratch the block. Sometimes they will come off. I try and get the majority off, but you gotta be careful around rubber tubes and stuff. I'm just showing you the way these guys. I, I don't do takes and all that. I might do take one, take two, so I forget to say something, but the way it is is the way it is. Like, try and, and do this side, you try not to put it inside the, the sump. I use a wire brush on the, the jug tool lot. I try not to get too much. You don't want crap in here to wreck your bearings. That's what causes damage. Especially if one of these wires come off. You don't want that either. So before I start, I'll blow this all back out again. Degreaser, blow a compressed air, make sure it's clean, and put oil back in there again. But the reason I put oil in there is you don't want dry bearings. Right. So you see the wheel spinning that way? That'll blow crap back in, so I'll spin the way. Got that piece. Where your eye protection, guys. This gas is me pain the butt. Well, I like to work on sourcing the new. <laughs> Get back the other way. Get a small wire brush on it. Right. So you get the drift anyway. So the majority, say 95% of the crap, has gone out of the motor. Um, brake cleaner, where's that? The greaser. There we go. Brake clear. You can soak this stuff. Um, it still takes clean, clean, clean. It takes time, guys. All right. Well, I'm going to set this thing up for um, pointing and degreeing and stuff like that. Now, if you want to learn how to degree a wheel and you use your wheel and crap, there's lots of videos. I think I've done one myself. Uh, the way, I will give one more tip though. Um, where's my cylinders? Oh, I'm losing my mind. There's the belt. Where's my cylinders? Oh, here's the Right. Piston stops. I don't like them. I've used one month before. It was plastic and a bent. And I've seen stories of these things breaking pistons. Because if you get that there, this is like 
um, steel, I think it's steel or cast iron, some, but it seems to be pretty heavy duty, but you put in all that, um, all that metal on the top of this, and you're trying to undo the clutch. Now these clutches, I pulled them off before on new saws, they put some type of seal on them, and oh mate, they've been tight, even with me big, this big chatter gun. Didn't want to come off, made a lot of noise, it finally came off. I don't use these for that. I find a use for it finally. I got it, I got the kit because I wanted um, the tool to pull off the clutches. So I put them in here. Um, fair turn. Once I got my degree wheel on and I roughly worked out bottom dead centre. Um, I put my um, wire, where's the wire? I put my wire on one of the screws for the dogs and adjust it where I want it. Um, got a uh, clamp on the end. Um, I've sold it. It's a, a double um, clamp for wiring. It goes like a double spade clamp, I think they call it. And I put a point on it. So I want accuracy. I want to be dead on where I, I want to be able to see exactly where I am. I don't want to be, um, you know, two degrees off. I want to be exact on what I'm doing. So that's why I use this. I'll snip up this on the cylinder. Um, wind this in where it gets a bit finger tight, like about about there. And then I can turn the motor over one way to the other way, usually about 38 degree, uh, 34 to 32 degrees. It depends how far that um, um, piston stop actually protrudes. Um, so you can go one way, and I'll go stop, go back the other way, and I'll stop, and you can actually go right. Now that's bottom dead center. Uh, exactly. So once you've worked out what you're doing, uh, bottom dead center. Yeah, bottom dead center. Once you've got that dead on, when you rotate it back around, you can be top dead center. And then you can work it at degrees and get your saw perfect. Um, so I suppose that's the last thing. Oh, the one thing I did find I didn't like about this saw. Um, I'll have to have a look at the other saw and see what it's got. Um, there's a breather. Whoops. There's a breather hole. Just, just there for the oil um, reservoir. Now, I take it what was in there is a piece of foam, and it's a little clamp that you'd normally put in a piston. Well, it doesn't fit. There's nothing for it to grab, so that was ready to fall out. I touched it, screwed on, and did fall out. So I'm not sure how that's meant to stay in there, but the other saw, I think they might have um, missed a machine, I don't know, but I want to put something back in there because it will end up blowing that seal out. But there, that's the only one thing I've found. So I've degraded that slightly further forward and um, I've got it all back together. So now I can start working out um, what I'm going to do with the actual um, piston. So I'll try um, the both cylinders um, I'm going to use this piston, um, Steve's old piston, because it's got um, really high dome or high um, top part of the piston, and see which one's got the most compression or the most squish. If this has got the squish, I'm keeping this one. I know the other piston doesn't have the squish because I put the gudgeon pin between the both, and this one is higher. So I have to work out which cylinder gives me the best squish. But I'm hoping it's Steve's because this one doesn't have very good um, transfer chambers. It's just 90 degrees and that's just stupid. I didn't like that one bit. This one was gunless. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching.